Chapter 2. Project Creation and Management. In this section of the Radiant Introductory Training Series, we will be discussing some of the basics for creating and developing projects using Lattice Radiant. Chapter 2 consists of five sections. In the first section of the chapter, called Creating and Opening Projects, the general process for creating Radiant projects and opening existing projects are covered. In section 2 of the chapter, Managing Project Files, we will introduce Radiant's File List tab and discuss the basics of using it for file management. In the third section of the chapter, called IP Catalog, we will discuss Radiant's IP Catalog and how it can be used to download and install IP. In the fourth section of the chapter, Implementing IP, the general process for generating an IP component and instantiating it in a design are reviewed. Finally, in the fifth section of the chapter, Using Source Templates, we will discuss Radiant Source Templates tab, and how it can be used to use Source Templates in Radiant projects. Chapter 2, Section 4. Implementing IP. In this section of the video series, we will be discussing the process for implementing IP using Radiant's IP Catalog. As mentioned in the previous section, Users will have to modify the active strategy for their project if they want to use an IP from the IP server and do not have a valid IP license. The strategy setting users will have to enable is called IP evaluation. If the IP evaluation setting is enabled, users will be able to generate a valid bit stream for their project for 4 hours, even if their project contains IP that doesn't have a valid IP license. If this setting is not enabled, Users will not be able to generate bit streams for projects with no IP licenses. To enable the IP evaluation setting, double click the name of the active strategy in Radiance File List tab. This will open the strategy setting configuration window. In the left side of this window, select the bit stream tab from the process browser section. In the area with the strategy settings for this section, check mark the IP evaluation checkbox. Once this has been done, click OK to confirm the changes to the strategy. With that said, we are now going to review the general process for implementing an IP package in a Lattice Radiant project. To begin generating an IP package, switch to the IP on local tab of the IP catalog. This area will contain all the IP that is available for use in a Lattice Radiant project. From the IP on local tab, Locate the IP you want to install. For this example, we will be generating the oscillator IP package. One important thing to note when selecting an IP to instantiate is that the same IP package may have multiple versions. As can be seen from the figure on the right, the highlighted IP package has three different versions. Once the correct IP has been located, users can begin generating it by double clicking its name. Users can also right-click the name of the IP package and select Generate as well. Doing this will open the window for generating an IP package component. In the first page of the Generate Component window, users will have to define a name for the IP they are generating. The name users select here is what the top module of the generated IP will be called. Once a name has been defined, users will have to select a location for their IP component to be generated. By default, new IP components are generated to the folder of the active project implementation. Once a name and location have been selected for the IP, click Next to continue generating the IP component. The next page in the IP generation window is called Configure Component. In this stage of the process for generating an IP, users will be able to define the parameters for the IP they're generating. If there are any issues with the parameters users select, a design rule check error will be posted in the area at the bottom of the window. As users modify the parameters for their IP, the IP preview window will update to display a block view of the module being generated. The exact parameters that are available in this page depend on the IP package being generated. Once users are done configuring the parameters for their IP component, they should click the Generate button to finish generating the IP. The final page in the component generation window is called Check Generated Result. This page contains a summary of the selections that were made to generate the current IP component. It is important that the Insert to Project checkbox at the bottom of the page is enabled. If this option is not enabled, 
The IP component will not be available for use in the current Radiant project. Once users have reviewed the information in this page, and are satisfied with their component selections, they should click Finish to generate the IP component. Once an IP component has been generated, its IP component file will be added to Radiance File List tab. The name of this file will match the name that was defined during component creation. This IP component file contains all the files that were generated with the new component. After an IP component has been generated, it can be instantiated to a project like any other Verilog module. The name of the module being instantiated should match the name defined during component creation. One useful feature of Radiant IP components is that users can generate an instantiation template to simplify the process for instantiating an IP. To generate an instantiation template for an IP component, right-click the IP component file in the File List tab. From the drop-down that appears, select either of the copy instantiation options, depending on the language of the file you will be instantiating the component in. The Verilog instantiation template for the oscillator IP component can be seen in the figure at the bottom of the slide. As can be seen from this example, the name of the component's module and its top-level ports are defined. Users will still have to define an instance name for their instantiation and will also have to define the port connections. That concludes this section of the introductory training series. To view the next video in the series, select the video titled Section 2.5 using source templates.